first person is Angela Bradshaw from Alzheimer Europe, and she's there. Excellent. And for those of you who weren't here um, during the start of the first session, as I said, you have three minutes. There is a timer there. Um, and I'm trying to be a little lenient, but uh, we have a lot of people to get through. So just keep an eye on it as you're speaking as well. OK, over to you. Yep, go to the, you can speak from the podium, yep. Uh, OK, go. go. Yeah. OK, so hi, everyone. Um, I don't think I need to explain to this audience that dementia is an area of a, with a very high unmet public health need. At the moment, there are approximately 10 million people in Europe who are living with dementia. This is a figure that's set to double by 2050, and it's one of the leading causes of dependence and disability in Europe. Care costs are estimated to amount to just under 400 billion euros annually in Europe. So I'm here representing Alzheimer Europe. Alzheimer Europe advocates for and provides a voice for people with dementia in Europe. We're the umbrella organization of national Alzheimer's associations, and we represent 37 of these associations from 33 European countries. And our mission is to change perceptions, policy, and practice to improve the lives of people with dementia. So as an organization, we have over 10 years' worth of experience in participating in IMI, Horizon 2020, FP6, FP7, and JPND projects. What do we bring to those projects? So on projects such as IMI, AMIPAD, and EPAD, we've provided our expertise and engagement on dementia treatment, care, prevention, and diagnosis. On projects like IMI EPND, EMIF, as well as Human Brain Project partnering initiatives. We provide and collaborate on AI-driven uh, risk prediction, data sharing, digital health tools, and digital literacy. And on projects such as EU Fingers and Radar AD, we involve the patient and caregiver voice to improve the value of research to people living with health conditions such as these. So what can we offer as partners to projects funded through the IHI. So first of all, we have structures embedded in our organization to involve the patient voice. We have the European Working Group of People with Dementia and shortly the European Working Group of Caregivers. And they are intimately involved in research and in providing their needs and values, making sure that that research reflects those needs and values. We support projects in identifying and addressing ethical challenges in research through our European Dementia Ethics Network. And we also support projects in their communications objectives. So we can help projects develop effective, impactful, insightful communications. And we can also leverage our own communication channels, which are extensive. We also have a very broad stakeholder network. So we're involved in policy, clinical, regulatory, and other networks. We are members of EMA working parties, and we are actively involved in many initiatives such as the European Academy of Neurology, the European Alzheimer's Disease Consortium, and through partnership with those initiatives and with other patient organizations, such as the European Patients Forum, we have long experience in collaborating with partners across the healthcare sector. So the IHI states that for health research to be truly effective, it needs to provide tangible benefits to patients and society. We firmly agree with this, and we believe the best way to achieve this is by ensuring that the patient and caregiver voice is understood, heard, and involved at every stage of the research pipeline. And we're interested in partnering with collaborators and on initiatives that share this belief. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, next um, on my list is Aurelie Soria Frisch. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hello, good morning. My name is Aurelie Soria Frisch. I'm the director of the Neuroscience Business Unit at Starla Barcelona. Uh, we are an SME, a uh, technology transfer SME. Uh, which are trying to transform scientific results into uh, products and services. Um, 
As you may know, uh, the development of uh, drugs for CNS treatment is uh, the riskiest business in the pharmaceutical uh, domain. And this is due to bad diagnosis, to different uh, types of uh, uh, problems. And basically, this results in them having uh, the largest time of uh, development and the lowest uh, chance of approval among all uh, pharmaceutical domains. Uh, one of the problems that we have seen is that uh, uh, sometimes so, uh, patients that are involved in clinical trials are uh, recruited as being so at an early stage while they are uh, actually at a late uh, stage uh, of the prodromal phase uh, in, the different, uh, in different neurodegenerative diseases. And that's uh, basically the problem that we are trying to uh, uh, help uh, solving is uh, um, the developing and implementing a patient stratification uh, system based on EEG technologies. So uh, based on this kind of devices of this size. So these are very easy to use uh, devices uh, that you place basically on your back part with some electrodes that are non-invasive and that are very easy to use. So we have electrodes that can be used uh, dried as well. And on top of the EEG, which is basically registering the electrical brain activity, we built an artificial intelligence system that it's able to distinguish those patients that are an early stage in the, the neurodegenerative uh, disease from those that are at a, a late stage. So uh, this uh, type of artificial intelligence system uh, has been developed and validated for Parkinson's disease, but we think it can be applied for other neurodegenerative diseases like uh, Alzheimer. Uh, basically because uh, recent literature in the field shows that uh, some EEG uh, features that you can observe are based on a, a general uh, imbalance in the excitation inhibition uh, uh, in the brain. And we would like uh, to help in your project, we would like to uh, join a building consortium in this particular uh, call or around neurodegenerative diseases and make it a, a success. Thank you very much. Thank you, three minutes exactly again, so 10 points. Um, okay, the next speaker, um, I'm not sure if they're in the room because we're not sure if they're here. Merdad Serafi. Sarah. Merdad Serafi from Alphasis Brain Technologies. Nope. Okay, we'll come back to them. Um, in that case, I would like to invite Francesca Cormack um, onto the stage, please. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm Francesca Cormack, I'm Chief Scientist at Cambridge Cognition. So Cambridge Cognition is an SME and we specialise in uh, developing tools for the assessment of cognition using a range of digital technologies. Um, our cognitive assessments have been uh, developed over the course of about 30 years and have been used in academic research in uh, the pharmaceutical industry and also in healthcare settings. The validity of these assessments and their sensitivity to disease has been established over their use in about 3,000 peer-reviewed papers and in about 300 clinical trials, of which about 40% are in neurodegenerative disease. Although our, our cognitive assessments and the kind of science behind them has been around for 30 years, the technology that we've been developing has really evolved over that time. And now we're really starting to look at how we can take cognitive assessments out of the clinic and actually put them in the hands of patients so that they can be assessed much more frequently and as they go about their daily lives. So using devices uh, such as mobile phones or wearable devices, uh, voice technology to look at movement symptoms. And that enables us, and I think it's really important for this call, to track not just impairment, but also fluctuation and change over time, um, which, especially if we're thinking about the impact of comorbidities or conditions like Parkinson's disease and even Alzheimer's disease, is uh, of massive utility. Um, so 
um, what can we bring to this, uh, to these kind of consortiums? So Cambridge Cognition has a long history of being involved in these kind of studies. We have a real passion for advancing the science of neurodegeneration and the assessment of, of cognition more broadly. Um, and we have been really delighted to be involved in a, in a range of different um, uh, IMI and EU funded consortia. Um, including most recently a, a project called IdeaFast, which really takes a transdiagnostic approach to looking at digital biomarkers of fatigue. Um, and here, this is transdiagnostic in both neurodegenerative and immune mediated inflammatory disorders, where we're providing cognitive assessment technology. And that data can be combined using machine learning with data from sensors and wearable devices to provide a kind of holistic picture of, of patients functioning as they go about their daily lives. Um, so, I think that we kind of can also bring uh, data science expertise and a real deep understanding of the impact of neurodegenerative diseases on the assessment of, of cognition. So I'd be really delighted to kind of have a conversation with people and follow up after this, uh, this presentation with any further information about, um, about possible uh, consortia and possible projects we could be involved with. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, another one perfectly on three minutes. Well done. Um, the next speaker is Miltos Vasiliadis of Alps Lasers. So, hello. Uh, more than 20 years ago, the first evidence uh, of the structure of uh, vitamin Lloyd plaques was revealed using a kind of infrared spectroscopy um, after the in situ analysis of Alzheimer's disease uh, patient. Uh, this tool, infrared spectroscopy, is used to um, uh, characterize samples from um, patients. Uh, most of these samples are taken, acquired uh, non-invasively. And uh, typically the process involves take the sample, go to the laboratory, measure, um, wait for um, the results, uh, and, and then assess. Um, the idea is, now the question is, um, uh, the vision is uh, what if we um, uh, manage to do the analysis much more conveniently and much more um, rapidly and uh, easy to use. So for the Star Trek fans, uh, it's the tricorder what we have in mind. So it's a small device that can be used to um, uh, analysis, to analyze the samples and get the results very, very fast. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to take the lab, to, to, to squeeze the lab into a small device. Uh, and for spectroscopy uh, tools, uh, the most important part is the, the, is the, the laser source for mid-IR spectroscopy. Uh, until recently, this kind of lasers were not available, uh, but now this is a mature technology that can be used um, widely. So Alps Lasers is a laser man manufacturer in Switzerland, uh, and we were the first company to commercialize this kind of lasers. Uh, and uh, what we're doing uh, the, uh, the last years um, through European projects is to demonstrate that our laser technology can be used to measure biomarkers very, very fast uh, and um, potentially of low cost. Um, and the, um, uh, some, some examples of this is we have a project on personalized nutrition, for example, where we analyze uh, urine samples. Uh, breath samples, human milk samples, uh, and we know from the literature that the same approach can be used to um, measure, uh, to, to validate uh, biomarkers uh, from several kind, kind of samples, uh, and this is the vision of, of ours. Uh, as a Swiss partner, we don't uh, consume budget from the topic because uh, the, the funding comes from uh, the Swiss government. Uh, and um, we believe that this is a kind of tools uh, that um, uh, can be used to obtain massively amount of data. So if you want to, uh, to, to assess uh, the condition of a patient, you need to, to uh, collect data to feed the AI models. So uh, this intermediate step can be used, uh, ca can be accomplished using this laser technology of ours. So, that's a technology that we want to push further. Uh, as, as I said, this is an emerging technology and um, will be part, most probably part, of the of future approaches for kind, uh, for several kinds of diseases like uh, neurodegenerative uh, diseases. Thank you very much.
Okay, thank you. And now uh, we would like to invite uh, Martin Hoffman Apitius of the Fraunhofer to give his pitch, please. Good. Thanks. So I'm stepping in for Holger Fröhlich, who is uh, COVID positive and couldn't make it. Um, I'm Martin Hofmann Apitius. I'm with Fraunhofer and we do applied research. Um, Fraunhofer is the largest uh, applied research organization in Europe. Since 14 years, we are in computational neurodegeneration research. I personally have uh, initiated and, and led as the academic lead the Etionomy project in IMI1. And uh, what are we doing? We, we do data landscaping at large scale um, and also knowledge uh, uh, landscaping. Uh, we generated the largest uh, mechanism, neurodegenerative disease mechanism inventory worldwide. And we have uh, shown in etionomy, um, and that was particularly worked by Holger Fröhlich, uh, how to do um, mechanism-based stratification uh, in neurodegenerative, in Alzheimer, essentially, but also in Parkinson. Now, um, we have moved forward uh, most recently with integrating and addressing the challenge of integrating um, more real-world um, data, in particular, Holger has shown how to link uh, digital readouts and endpoints uh, with the classical understanding of um, study data like ATNI. Um, and that was done in the radar AD context, where he blended in a Bayesian network approach, digital endpoints, and uh, the fundamentals that we have learned from, from ATNI. More recently, we are also expanding uh, towards um, towards uh, using real-world data like EHRs uh, outputs. Everybody is probably aware that um, EHRs don't measure what we typically measure in uh, neurodegenerative disease studies. So this is a non-trivial uh, non uh, challenge. And uh, in particular now where, where we were looking for uh, comorbidities in this particular call, Elisabetta Vaudanum was making the point um, we, we probably need new methodology to essentially integrate uh, comorbidity information with uh, neurodegenerative disease progression. If you're interested in uh, disease progression modeling and comparative disease progression modeling, look into the work of Colin Birkenbiel, um, a PhD student of mine, and comparative um, data landscaping uh, work by Yasemin Salimi and my team. Um, who has collected probably the largest uh, collection of longitudinal AD data worldwide and mapped them completely longitudinally. Holger is a person who has also developed a proper AI for that and recently published a model that, uh, on a modeling approach that is based on variational autoencoders uh, that uh, do imputations alongside with the training, which is quite an advantage if you deal with sparse data. And I think. With that, I'm already done, and uh, um, those people who, who know me know that we are living in a partner and data ecosystem in your generation for many years. I'm happy to you know, talk about what can be done in the most recent call of IHI. Thanks. Thank you. So that wraps up the list of everyone we had. I'm just going to give a final call for Mayor Dad Serafi. Ah, you're here. Excellent. Okay, maybe if we can restart the timer for him because it looks like he has 10 yes. seconds left. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, how the system works, but I was also matched to talk to somebody in person downstairs at the same That's time. That's good. Networking, <laughs> is, networking is the goal. Yes. Um, I'm from Alpha Brain Technologies. We, uh, we are a startup specifically focusing on uh, epilepsy at this moment. Uh, we have developed a, a wearable EEG, super light, super seamless uh, wearable that is attaching over the forehead and behind the ear, and we can uh, uh, monitor the patients 24 7 and the device has an integrated AI that can uh, give an alarm before the seizure happening. So if there is any project that is having uh, the comorbidity of neurodegenerative disease with epilepsy, we are interested. On a completely separate note, if uh, you are working 
uh, with any other kind of new degenerative disease, such as Alzheimer's disease, that need also some other brains, other uh, real signal, like a brain signal, uh, that has been shown to be uh, um, quite closely linked to uh, the progression of the disease, uh, we would be interested in um, contributing to the project as well. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.